Well, dear students, today we will see the next DCT video on AEE subject which is based on the audio systems. So let's start DCT AEE part 3 where I am going to cover 20 questions. The first question is question of 41. Microphones are electroacoustic transducer which convert. Okay, so the options here are acoustic energy to electrical energy, electrical energy to acoustic energy, acoustic energy to mechanical energy, and mechanical energy to acoustic energy. So if you see what a microphone is going to do with a diagram, then you can see that you can see here if you are having a microphone say this is your microphone okay now in this microphone you are going to speak here you are going to talk you are going to give sound waves these are sound waves and this microphone is going to convert it into electrical signal which goes to the wire so it will convert into electrical signal which goes to the wire and then you can amplify it and give to the speakers sound energy is converted to electrical energy so that means option a is the right answer where you are saying acoustic energy is converted to electrical energy so microphones are electroacoustic transducer which will convert acoustic energy means sound energy into electrical energy so here option a will be the right answer acoustic energy to electrical energy then we'll go to the next question question number 42 the unit of sound pressure used for rating microphones is what the options are pascal bar watt decibel okay so here the unit of sound pressure what we have studied used for rating microphones the unit of sound pressure used for rating microphones is given as bar a bar is equal to a sound pressure of one dyne d y n e dyne per square centimeter speech provides sound pressures between 0 0.4 and 15 bars for music the pressure ranges from 0 0.5 bars to 1250 that is 1250 bars so as a whole sound pressure used for rating of microphones is measured in bar so option b will be the right answer here bar is the right answer then we'll go to the next question question of 43 the polar diagram of a true omnidirectional microphone is how polar diagram of a true omnidirectional microphone is how okay now here First, we should know what do we mean by polar diagram. Now here, the way in which a microphone responds to the sounds coming from different directions is plotted on a circular graph, which is known as polar diagram. Okay. Like say, for example, this is your mic. This is your mic. Okay. Now, it is going to convert sound energy into electrical energy. So, if the sound energy can come from any direction, okay, any direction, then it will be all directions. It can be called as omnidirectional, okay. Then, in that case, the polar diagram will be like this, circular type, okay. So, in that case, the polar diagram will be circular type. Sometimes you can have directional microphones where it can take sound only from one input. In that case, it will be a directional microphone. Now here the question asked is the polar diagram of a true omnidirectional microphone. So true omnidirectional microphone means it is going to take sound from all directions. So it will be a perfect circle. The diagram will be a perfect circle. So option A will be the right answer here perfect circle you can see option a is the right answer then we'll go to see the next question moving coil microphones are options given are active transducer 
unidirectional, both active and unidirectional, or neither active and unidirectional. So here, it comes under the a category of active transducer, which will convert sound into electrical. So here, option A will be the right answer. It is active transducer. Then we'll go to the next question, question number 45. Moving coil microphones are, options are omnidirectional, option B is unidirectional, option C is neither A nor B. Okay, so it is going to take sound from all directions. So it is called as omnidirectional. Okay, so moving coil microphones are omnidirectional is the answer. So option A is the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question. Then we'll go to the next question. Question number 46. Carbon microphone. Okay. Options are a produces an EMF, modulate the current from an external battery, both A and B, and neither A nor B. Okay. So here, if you remember the carbon microphone diagram, we, we were having one electrode here and another electrode here. Okay. So in both these electrodes, we had carbon granules, carbon granules, okay. Sound waves we used to come from here. This is sound. This electrode is made movable. This is movable. This is fixed, fixed, okay. And to this electrode, we are going to connect, okay, a battery, a battery. We are going to connect a battery and that battery will be connected through this. You can also have a, a resistance here and this will be connected minus plus B. Now because of that battery, a current will start flowing here. Okay, a current will start flowing here, I. Now as this plate varies because of the sound incident on that, okay, sound waves incident on that, our granules will vary their resistances and then the resistance of the circuit will vary and in that case the current varies that means the current is varying because of the input sound okay so here option b will be the right answer modulate the current from an external battery option b is the right answer then we'll go to the next question question of 47 the natural impedance of a ribbon microphone okay so here the uh, feature of a ribbon microphone is its natural impedance is very low and that option a is the right answer here it's very low then we'll go to the next question the ordinary dynamic microphone is whether it is omnidirectional from all directions or whether it is unidirectional okay only one direction where it is non-directional, there is no direction for this microphone or either A or B. So here the answer for dynamic microphone is non-directional. Option C will be the right answer. The ordinary dynamic microphone is non-directional. Okay. Then we'll go to the next question. The polar diagram of a capacitor microphone can be modified. Okay. The polar diagram means the way the input sound waves are going to come from which direction that will be given by the polar diagram. So the polar diagram of a capacitor microphone can be modified. Option A is varying the polarizing voltage. Option B is varying the pressure gradient. Option C is both A and B. And option D is neither A nor B. So here the answer is varying the polarizing voltage. Okay, If you vary the polarizing voltage, then the polar diagram of a capacitor microphone can be modified. So here option A is the right answer, varying the polarizing voltage. Then we'll go to see question number 50. The half-life of electrode microphone varies from. So here the options given are 100 to 250 years, 250 to 500 years, 100 to 1000 years, and 250 to 1000 years. Now here, half-life, that is, it is a life measured like we do it in radioactive substances. It is the time taken to fall 
to half of its previous level to half of its previous level okay like for example you have an electrostatic charge which will leak slowly okay and after some time it will leak so that uh, you will know that uh, what was the starting amount of uh, charge and then when it becomes half uh, what is the amount okay so then how much time is taken for that to become half so in that way time taken to fall to half its previous level is called as half life so the makers of electric microphone claim that an expected half life of between 100 to 1000 years so users need not have to worry a conditions of high humidity though may well accelerate the deterioration but here the approximate half life uh, range of years for electric microphone is from 100 to 1000 years so option c will be the right answer 100 to 1000 years then we'll go to the question of 51 a carbon microphone is options are inductive device pure resistive device pure or capacitive device or rl device that is a resistance inductance device okay so here we see that in a carbon microphone we use carbon granules okay we use a carbon granules so movement of the diaphragm where the sound waves hit will vary the resistance of the granules and so it will control the line current in accordance with the sound waves reaching the diaphragm that means it is a pure resistance device where resistance of the granules is changed and because the resistance changes the current in the outer circuit will vary and that can be taken as a variation in electrical energy so sound energy is converted to electrical energy so here option b will be the right answer pure resistance device then we'll go to see the next question question number 52 a, a carbon microphone is best used in which application option a is a dynamo option b is a telephone option c is transformer option d is none okay so here we, we, we have always read that whenever we have a carbon microphones it were used in our earlier uh, a cup type the older dialing phones which we, which we had for landlines earlier now in that in the cup where we speak okay there will be the uh, microphone which will convert sound energy into electrical energy where there are carbon granules so the most important application for carbon microphone is a telephone systems so b a telephone will be the right answer here so a telephone is the most important application of carbon microphones then we'll go to the next question a, a dynamic microphone changes sound into an electrical signal using which of the following principle option a is a carbon granule movement inside a magnetic field option b is a capacitive effects of a moving plate option c is a moving coil inside a magnetic field and option d is piezoelectric field. so we know that in dynamic microphone there is a moving coil in a magnetic field so as the coil moves okay the variations in electricity takes place and then you, this is how you can convert your sound energy to electrical energy so option c will be the right answer a moving coil inside a magnetic field so here you can see a dynamic microphone changes sound into electrical signal by using a moving coil inside a magnetic field then we'll go to see question number 54 a, a condenser microphone operation is based on now a condenser microphone is also called as capacitor microphone okay its operation is based on change of capacitance so change of a capacitance will make you or will give you the a conversion of sound energy to electrical energy so here option b will be the right answer capacitance a condenser microphone operation is based on capacitance then we'll go to the next question moving iron headphones okay work on the principle of what now here we are speaking about headphones so moving iron headphones work on the principle of options are magnetic attraction magnetic repulsion both a and b or none 
So obviously it is magnetic attraction. So it works on the principle of magnetic attraction. So option A will be the right answer, magnetic attraction. Then we'll go to the next question. Moving iron headphones suffer from, suffer from which problem? Whether it is natural resonance problem or high harmonic distortion problem or non-linear distortion problem or none of this. So here the problem faced in moving iron headphones is natural resonance. So option A will be the right answer. Natural resonance is the answer. Then we'll go to the next question, question number 57. Which one of the following suffers from high harmonic distortion? So options here are moving iron headphones, moving coil headphones, electrostatic headphones and crystal headphones. So here the high ha harmonic distortion is seen in moving iron headphones. So here option A will be the right answer. Moving iron headphones are one which suffer from high harmonic distortion. Okay. Then we'll go to see question number 58. Which one of the following headphones needs polarizing voltage? Polarizing voltage, whether it is moving coil, electrostatic, moving iron or crystal. So obviously it is moving coil. Moving coil headphones require polarizing voltage. So here option A is the right answer. Moving coil requires polarizing voltage. And then we'll go to the next question, question number 59. A loudspeaker converts. Options are electrical energy to mechanical energy, acoustic energy to electrical energy, mechanical energy to electrical energy, and electrical energy to acoustic energy. Okay. Now we know that loudspeaker, when you draw the diagram like this, it's a loudspeaker. So input will be through wires, that is electrical input, and output will be converted into sound because it is a speaker. So sound will be the output. So we are converting electric energy to sound energy. It is just opposite to the working of microphones. So here option D that is electric energy to acoustic energy. That means electric energy to sound energy is the right answer for loudspeaker. So here you can see a loudspeaker converts electrical energy to acoustic energy that is sound energy. Then we'll go to the next question, question number 60. The input impedance of a crystal loudspeaker. Okay, so the input impedance of a crystal loudspeaker is of what type? Whether it is a resistive type, inductive type, a capacitive type, or it is a combination of A and B, that is a resistor and inductive. So here, if you study the crystal loudspeaker, the input impedance is of capacitive type. So option C will be the right answer here. A capacitive type. The input impedance of a crystal loudspeaker is capacitive type. Okay. Thank you students.